Hello, welcome to Hack a Week TV episode number six. This week, instead of doing a project and building something, I am going to do a repair on a Dell Mini 10V netbook. I picked this up on eBay for a very reasonable price because it had a problem with the software. The operating system needed to be reinstalled. That was the easy part. Then I discovered it had a bad USB port. It looks like someone dropped the device and uh, it got cracked or something and it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't register the device. You plug it in, nothing happens at all. I did notice a few uh, other little, there's a tiny little crack right here. So I think it may have gotten dropped. Uh, didn't hurt anything else. It, it works just fine other than that. But uh, we need to get in there and put a new USB port on. I have one here that I salvaged from a telephone charger. Uh, found it at the dollar store and pulled it apart. So now I have a nice heavy duty. USB port. It's actually stronger than the one that was in there. And the bonus of that is I have left over now this really cool little 12 volt to 5 volt uh, power supply, which is kind of handy. I'll throw that in the in the bin and do something with that later. So uh, today you're going to learn how to take apart a Dell Mini. Right, let's take a look at what you'll need to get inside this Dell Mini. You'll need a number one Phillips screwdriver, a small flat blade screwdriver. That'll help with uh, popping apart some of the clips. Um, needle nose pliers will also help some fine ones pulling clips out and such. Desoldering braid to take out the USB port. Some solder and a soldering iron. Of course, you need a spare USB jack. And uh, an old credit card to help pop apart the panels. So. The first thing we need to do is get this cover off for the Wi-Fi because underneath that is a screw that goes into the motherboard and it's a tiny one right there. It's on that side of the Wi-Fi card. Take that out and set that aside in a special place because it's a unique screw with a smaller thread than all of the other ones. Now we need to take the battery out, put that over there. There's eight screws in the back panel that have to come off, and uh, we'll get those out now. And eight, there we go. That takes care of this back cover. Now, this doesn't come off, this just loosens up everything for the other side to come off. Now we need to flip it over, and the keyboard will be loose now. We put a little flat blade screwdriver there, and lift up. There's a connector right here that needs to come apart. And I need to zoom in on that to show you a better picture of what to do with that. It's a little bit fragile. You need to be careful. There's a little anchor here that pushes in underneath that white part and pinches the ribbon cable. Carefully slide that back. Out comes the ribbon cable. Put that aside. There's one for the touch pad as well. Slide that back and the ribbon cable for the touchpad is now free. Now I get you back out a little so you can see what's going on. We need to take off the touchpad. This is where we need our little credit card thing. Slide a fingernail or a screwdriver in there and get it started. And carefully work your way along. Use your fingernails to kind of keep up as you go. And it'll pop apart as you get down the line here. Once you get around this corner, then it's pretty easy at that point. The rest of it just kind of pops off, wiggle it back and forth and lift up. Now we need to thread that ribbon cable out through this slot carefully. And now we can put that aside. Next we'll take out the hard drive. It's one screw right here. Let's keep all these screws separated. The hard drive you just simply push that way. Get a little screw over here, lift up one end, out it comes. Keep the screw that holds it with the hard drive. That makes it easier to remember where it goes. There's some connectors that need to come off before this cover can come off. This one here goes to that proximity switch. This one goes to the speakers. This one goes to the power switch. Try to do it by the plastic part and not by pulling on the wire. Pulling on the wire is not a good thing. Okay. Now there's a screw there, 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 and there. Once we take those out, 
this top cover will come off from the motherboard and we'll have access to everything underneath. Again, we're going to flip it over. Four screws should fall out. There they are. One, two, three, four. We'll put those separate from the ones that go in the back because they are shorter. We don't want to mix them up. Lift up right here first. Work your way this way. Lift up here, here. Now just pop it loose right there. You'll feel a little click as it pops loose. You didn't break anything. You just detached it from its little detent mechanism. And that's the cover for the motherboard. Now the motherboard has a few more connectors we need to take off. There'll be a piece of tape right here you need to lift up. This connector goes over to these ports. Let's get that out of the way. This connector supplies power to the backlight on the LCD. This one is the video connection to the LCD. That's it. Now there's a screw right here marked with a little white arrow right next to it. As is the case with lots of electronics, they usually mark the screws that matter to take things apart. Keep those screws separate because they're unique. And we lift up on this side first. Oh, almost forgot. We need to flip it over. Disconnect the Wi-Fi card from the plug. Lift up. And take out the motherboard. There it is. Now we can get in here, desolder this bad, broken connector, and put a new one on. Let's start with the lugs on each side. They're going to take the most heat away since my soldering iron is nice and hot right now. I have a new soldering station on the way. It'll be nice to have that. So I'll be able to turn the heat up a little when I'm doing something like this. Okay, that about does it with the desoldering. And this is ready to pop out of here now. But it's broken, so see how it just kind of came apart. Alright, get all the little holes lined up. These leads are a lot longer than the other one was, so I'll uh, be cutting those off. from the other side to make sure it's fully seated. Ooh, that's warm. Let's see how everything worked out. There it is. Nice, tight fit. Alright, we have a new connector in place and we're ready to put this thing back together. So, it's basically the reverse of everything you saw before. Get the motherboard started over on this side first. Oops. Make sure that these little things that have the screen around them that are attached to everything along this side, those are ground connectors. And uh, it's just like a screen mesh stuff with a little adhesive on one side and it connects to the ground plane on the chassis. So put it in this side first. Make sure all your cables are out of the way. Let it drop down. Make sure this cable isn't pinched underneath the motherboard. Now we can go ahead and put the two screws back in the motherboard. One goes here. The other one right there. Reconnect all of our connectors. This is where the needle nose pliers help a lot. Make sure we get all those plugged back in. There's a little slot where that needs to go. You can plug this one in now. It goes to the proximity switch. And let's flip it over. Plug in the Wi-Fi card. And since we're right here, let's go ahead and put that screw back in right now. And we can put the cover back on. And now 
we flip it back over. Whoops. Get back here. Install the hard drive. Yeah, we'll do that afterwards. Let's get the cover on first. We have all of our connectors hooked up. Let's double check that. That's all good. Start at the back. It'll snap into place. Work your way toward the front. Let's get this connector for our power switch. Plug it back in. Here's one for the speakers. Plug that one back in. And now we have four screws to put back in to hold that on. One, two, three, four. Incidentally, the uh, RAM is on the back of the motherboard underneath here. So if you did want to change the RAM, this procedure works for that too. You just, right at that stage where the motherboard is out, go ahead and put the RAM in. Now we can put the hard drive back in, slide it into place, put the screw in. Next will be the touchpad. I need to thread that ribbon cable back through that slot. It can get a little tricky because it likes to hang up on the surface mount components a bit. Just take your time with it and You'll work it through there. Lift it off the surface of things and it won't catch quite as easily. Sometimes they just drop right in, other times it's a bit of a wrestling match. I like to start them along this edge and then just push down with a firm push all the way around. It'll go click, click, click. Make sure it's down all the way around. And when you put these back in, slide the anchor back this way. There's a little tab on them. Use that tab to hang on to the ribbon cable and push it into place. And then push the anchor back in place. Make sure it's firmly seated all the way on both sides. It's got to be in there all the way or it could loosen up later and cause trouble. Now we'll do the keyboard. Same procedure. Slide back the anchor. Grab a hold of this tab with the needle nose pliers. Now, see my anchor slid in a little bit. Can't have that. It's got to be all the way back. If you bump into it, it'll move in there really easily. Let me slide that in all the way. Hold it with one finger. Push both sides back into place. Make sure they're all the way seated. And the keyboard goes in this end first. Drops down. The screws in the back hold it in place. So we'll close the lid. Go to the back. Put our eight screws back in, and that is that. We are booted up, and I have a Dell keyboard here, USB keyboard, to test the port with. So let's plug it in and see if we hear the badook sound. And certainly we do, there it is. And I can check communication by pushing the Windows start key, and there it is. I have communication through that port. It works. Now you know how to take apart and repair a Dell Mini 10V, or any Mini for that matter. Quite a few of them are based on this same principle where the keyboard flips up, you have access to the motherboard and everything underneath it. Some of them on the back have uh, a separate um, cover right in here for the memory. This one does not have that. You have to take the whole thing out. The motherboard has to come out for that. So, now that you know how to do that, uh, don't be afraid to take apart other things when they break and see if you can fix them. Um, you really have nothing to lose if it's broke, right? And you might learn something on the way and maybe even fix it yourself. So, thanks for watching this episode. Keep on hacking and uh, check in next week for the next project. Thanks for watching Hack-A-Week TV. Bye!